when he says with five years in this defensive system and five years worth of film, it's safe to say that all of our defensive tendencies have been shown, especially the way that you two pick up on them. That's fair. <laughs> he said, you know, the pros will too. Mm-hmm. Eric, this, let's you know pivot for a minute and potentially address this because I yeah. think this is a hot button issue for a lot of fans with the idea that either Leslie Frazier or Sean McDermott's idea of this defensive scheme, structure, tendency, whatever verbiage you want to go with, has potentially run its course with this team from a playoff pers- perspective and matchup perspective against the elite teams in the league. Where do you sit on, you know, I don't want to necessarily have us make a decision of like Frazier should go or stay, but what are your thoughts on the scheme of this Bills defense within the Leslie Frazier, Sean McDermott world? So I'm going to try to lay out an example and and why I think it may be time to move on from Leslie Frazier. So the defense is going to align more times than not in what nickel over. So that three technique at Oliver is going to be aligned to the tight end almost all the time. They do not play your hybrid system where they're changing from an under to over front. They're not playing a lot of base defense. They're not, um, they're not running a three, four, you know, hybrid type scheme. So mm. they're nickel over almost well, over 90% of the time. Yeah. And so regardless of what the, what the offense is going to run or how they align, the bills are going to align almost exactly the same. And they're going to try to move some stems is what they call it on the defensive side, move the Taron Johnson stem, move the safeties around to try to disguise what they're actually going into. And so when offenses come to play the bills, they have a good idea what the defense is going to look like, what they're going to roll to. They have a good idea. So Leslie Frazier has to come up with certain checks. You know, if a, if a team's attacking him in a certain way, he's got to have a certain check to combat that, right? Or a certain audible or a certain coverage, a certain bracket to combat that, depending on how they're attacking that. Well, in the regular season, what we're seeing or maybe there's two, three at tops, four checks in a certain coverage or a mm. formation, right? Versus a certain offensive look. The problem is in the playoffs, they're trying to call the perfect defense. They're trying to have the, all the checks covered mm. for the formations. So they go from four checks to 15 checks in the postseason, which does what to the defenders, which what does what to these players. It slows them down. It overloads so, their brain. Yes, and so a lot of people, it's it's funny because it's the total opposite of what most fans are thinking. Like, yes, they're not doing yes. enough. But really, again, they're showing the same thing every single play. So it looks like they're not doing anything, but the check is what's happening post, post-snap, post and that we don't all know. I mean, I know a good amount of it just because having talked to the players on the defense, yeah. <laughs> but they're getting overloaded, and it only happens in these big games. Because they're trying to call the perfect coverage. They're trying to call the perfect defense. They're overloading the players when, what I said today, what Leslie Frazier needs to do and needed to do is trust his players. Mm. You know, you had a cover zero look on third and four that we're going to go over. Why are you in off coverage with Trey White versus Jamar Chase? If you're going to be blitzing Burrow and you see Burrow calling an alert and calling, hey, we're throwing hot off these two guys, you better get up on the line of scrimmage and press that guy. So I think Leslie Frazier, I think he may, I think the players have in many ways maxed out in this scheme. Mm -hmm. I think Leslie Frazier has shown his defense and it's a very good defense. As I said, well, it'll win him most games uh, on a weekly basis. In these big games, they almost do too much. And it's not just Frazier. Let's be honest. McDermott has a heavy hand. Mm -hmm. And what's being run on that side of the ball. And so he's a part of it. So, but I do think that the philosophy and strategy needs to be tweaked a little bit, changed a little bit. They're not going to do anything drastic, right? And they're not going to change to a three, four or change to an odd front. Like they have a certain personnel that fits this scheme. They just need a different set of eyes, a different game plan strategy, because what they've been doing in these big games is just not working. And I think, that these players have maxed out and they need to be trusted more in these situations. That's I'm in a very similar position. When you look at, and maybe this isn't a popular popular statement to make right now. When you look at this bill's defense on the whole under Leslie Frazier, under Sean McDermott, this is a good defense. They would not continue. And I know some people got at me on Twitter being like, well, this is because DVOA is made up and garbage. They wouldn't be this good of a defense 
from a DVOA perspective and a lot of advanced metrics perspective year after year after year if they were not a quality group from a player standpoint and a quality group from a coaching standpoint. On the whole, this is a good defense schematically and player-wise and personnel-wise. The problem is, and you hit it right on the head, when you get into these big games, when you get into these matchup games where it's one and done, if anything is slightly off, you're done. Your weaknesses are, are are magnified. Your weaknesses can be amplified. Teams are trying to mitigate your strengths. People will play you to your disadvantages. And when you're trying to correct for that by adding, whether it's more cooks in the kitchen or adding more ingredients, that's that's not it. And especially in a game where on the other side of the ball, you're playing the Bengals offense, things were so simple for them. I mean, granted, they added some some wrinkles from a, you know, we're going to come out and add some personnel tweaks or we're going to line up in this formation and check and, you know, shift to something else. Mm -hmm. Those points are there. But a lot of it was Burrow just dropping back and he was just like, oh, you guys are doing all this stuff? Cool. I'm just going to dump it down to my running back who's going to get like six or seven yards. Or I'm just going to hit T. Higgins on this little sit and he's going to get 11 or 12 yards. Or I'm going to hit the vacant spot in the middle of the field. And you saw that. What we saw in this game were things that, we usually don't see from the Bills defense. And I think a big piece that speaks to what I'm what I'm alluding to and what you saying about the, the overcoaching, the overloading, how many blown coverages did it seem like we saw where multiple guy defenders are covering one guy and someone's running scot free? And honestly, think about this, guys. How often does that happen in the regular season? That's my point. Not that often. No. There aren't a lot of blown coverages in That's the regular what... season. Yes. Trust me, guys. I'm I'm telling you, I'm not making this up. To go from four checks in the regular season to 15 is massive. In many ways, I hate to bring it up. I hate to bring him up. It was the same issue we had with Rex Ryan when he was Mm. in Buffalo. There were too many checks and too many audibles, too many trying to find the perfect defense. Yeah. And just not enough letting the players play Play fast. Let them trust them. There's a lot of talent on that defense. And they've been in the system for. How long? Several years now, which doesn't help Leslie Frazier's point. They've mastered this defense. They've Mm. mastered the Sean McDermott and Leslie Frazier defense. And look where it's gotten them. Yeah, there's there's a certain at this point, I think it's fair to have that conversation of what the ceiling is like for this defense schematically from a championship standpoint, because they continue in these big games yeah, they just overload the players and it's just overcoached and there's too much. And, you know, you said it, uh, Coach Chapman said it in the in the comments. When you have that much going on in your brain, it's impossible to play ball. When you're trying to figure out like, okay, this guy, this guy just motioned from, you know, the X receiver spot to the slot. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Okay, if 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 it's A, I'm supposed to do B, but I don't think it's A. I think it's C, but then that means I'm supposed to do D, and that means the safety's supposed to do this. There were so many pieces and you know, I, I love that I set it up and you knocked it down with the idea of we don't, this defense is so schematically sound from a responsibility standpoint. Everyone always knows where they're supposed to be. Yeah. And you don't see, you know, guys running free in the middle of the field. You don't see blown coverages in the regular season. There was somebody picking up some, especially for a defense that runs a lot of match coverages like the Bills do. Yeah. That shit is hard yeah. and they do it and execute and- it well. And the other thing to add to this is because they kind of use some of it, some of it versus the Bengals is when they play guys like Tyreek Hill, when they play guys like Jamar Chase, they tweak a few things on defense too. Is in what a lot of good coaches do, and Frazier is no different. And trust me, they have done this. Is they star a player, they star Jamar Chase, they mm-hmm. star Tyreek Hill, and based on where he motions or where he aligns, there are certain coverages they want to be in, and that's why. Yeah. When you talk to players about this defense and uh, when you talk to about the leaders, uh, talk to the leaders of this defense, they talk about how Tremaine is that important, how he's important because of that. He has to know all three levels and all of those checks that come with it. They did some of that with Chase, which we're going to see some of it when they had him in the backfield. They motioned him around, uh, you know, so they do that from time to time. And it's also, again, one of those reasons there are those blown coverages versus a Tyreek Hill when he was with the dolphins and when he was with the chiefs. And so there's just too much manipulation going on instead of just, you know, trusting the Jimmy's and the Joe's and not just Mm -hmm. worrying about the X's and O's. And I think that that can go so far in, you know, for this defense, for this team, if they just trusted the players and some really good players just trusted them to make plays and not bog them down with these checks. 